happening to our kids and our family and our neighbors. So today, I'm asking you to really stand with us, with us on this. And if we don't get no justice, they don't get no peace. That's right. All right, so I want to just break down what the platform is. You know, we, we've been talking a lot about this police accountability platform. You know, what is it? What are we trying to do? And, and all I gotta say is the same thing that the cops say when they murder black folks in the street. If you don't do nothing wrong, nothing's gonna happen, okay? What we're looking for is to try to change our police commission. We, we are trying to make three common sense changes to our police commission. The first thing is that we wanna make sure that we have uh, appointment guidelines and a process that is actually transparent. You know, one of those guidelines that we're talking about is removing the police from the police commission. That's right, the police chief. The police chief is the secretary of the police commission, and we need him out of the room. How can our complaint be taken seriously when the police chief is secretary? Do you think they're gonna go against their own officers? No. In addition to the police chief and mayor on the commission, the rest of the commission has been appointed without any guidelines. There are other commissions in this city that have guidelines for appointment, but the, the police commission, who oversees the people with the guns and the tasers, they got no guidelines. There, there's just, uh, Steve just gets to decide, really, is how it works. And so we need members who represent the community that's being over police, and the mayor needs to answer to who he selects. It can't just be a free for all. We're fighting for guidelines that are fair and transparent. We should know why a certain member was selected. We need to make sure the police commission represents the people. We know people who have applied and didn't get a phone call, and we know people that say they were hand selected for this police commission. And if we don't have guidelines, we end up with backscratching deals in city government. Let's remember that Brad Jordan is on the police commission. He's been voting to say the officers did nothing wrong in cases of police brutality while the city is trying to push through his project to keep stone. Yeah, that's right. That's one of the Our second man is really simple, and we shouldn't even have to say this one, yet here we are. The commissioner that oversees police officers with guns and tasers should have some type of training. Yeah, just saying. Right now, they get none. We ask them. And if we are expecting the police commission to hold our officers accountable, then the police commissioner needs to have the knowledge of what a police officer's responsibilities are and what our rights are as civilians in the community. And if they don't know that, how can they possibly make a decision of whether or not a police officer steps out of line? They can't. It's common sense. I'll tell you, when I worked at CBS, I could train. You know? I mean, and that, that, that just didn't seem as challenging as you know, walking around and going, you know? And our third demand is to make the complaint process a little bit less threatening. You know, right now, if you want to make a complaint, you have to have some contact with the police, either chopping it off or while you're being interrogated by the police commission. And that also includes the lawyer for the city of Kingston, who upholds one position to ensure that the city doesn't get sued. So why are they asking that question? We need a process that supports it. We need to be able to complain without fear of retaliation, and we need the ability to make anonymous complaints. And we need to make sure that an interrogation by the lawyer is not a part of this process. That is not fair. There's so much available footage that our police commissioners could look through. They, could, if they had access to it. They could see how an officer behaved. And then they can actually police our police department instead of our police policing themselves. Someone that has been assaulted by a police officer should not have to have contact with the police officer to submit a complaint. I would feel really, really uncomfortable having to do that. We have stood here in this very space and we have watched our police commissioners, including our mayor, walk out of this room instead of having to face the people. So we are asking for common sense. We are asking for our safety, and we're just asking for the police commissioners to be people that care when the police step out of line. Not people who are doing a favor for our city so they get a favor back. And we need real police accountability, and we need justice, and we're not gonna stop until we get it. Woo! that our common council members were going to introduce legislation at the Law of the Commission tonight, but they came up with excuse after excuse as to why we can't do that. And so we the people are gonna introduce that legislation tonight. We're gonna bring it to all of them. We're gonna make sure that they can't say they didn't know about it anymore. They have the option right here, right now, to start pushing forward legislation in our community so that we can move forward. No more lip service, 
No more we wish we could do this. No more it's tough what's happening over there in, in the, at the national level. Right here in the city of Kingston, we have the ability to have real police accountability, and we are not going to stop until we get it. So I don't know exactly what time it is. Their um, meeting starts at 6.30. I think some of them are, are in here already. But we did a little takeover to City Hall tonight. And this is our City Hall. And we're going to let them know what we the people need. And it's going to be over there. So we're listening to music again. And then we're going to go over. 